Welcome to this edition of Metro Focus. I'm Joe Green, Director of Advertising and Marketing here at Metro. Well, look at there, we find ourselves back in the District of Columbia. Are you ready to explore all the great destinations that are Metro accessible? I hope so, because today we're gonna to take you to Escape Room DC, a family-friendly or group fun venue activity designed to test your brain and problem-solving skills. We'll share updates in the Metro U-Pass, a program for regional college students that allows them to learn, work, and play during their studies here in the region. You'll also get a behind-the-scenes look as Metro participated in the Bring Your Child to Work Day. We're cultivating the next generation of Metro employees. Finally, we'll feature information about Metro Late Night Bus Service. Just because Metro Rail Service is ended for the day doesn't mean Metro Bus can't help you enjoy DC nightlife. All this and more in this edition of Metro Focus. Escape the Room DC is a live puzzle event. Um, you are locked in a room for 60 minutes and you have to solve some puzzles, find some clues in order to escape the room. So we have three rooms here at Escape the Room DC. Um, our first room is the Agency, which is a spy themed room loosely based off of James Bond. Um, and that room is very numbers and code based. Our second room is the Dig. And that is a very visual based room. It is a archeological themed room on um, very loosely based off of Indiana Jones. And our third room, Mission Control, is our NASA space themed room um, that has to do with the lunar landing. So here at Escape the Room DC, a clue master is going to be the person that is running your game. They'll be there throughout the entirety of the game to assist you with anything you might need and give you any clues that you might think you need um, throughout the entirety of your game as you unfold the story. People don't panic for the most part. Um, when they first come in, our number one question is, are we really locked in the room? And the answer is yes, you are physically locked in the room. Um, but we are watching and listening throughout the entirety of the game. So if someone does need to get out for any reason, we can go ahead and just let them out. So I go ahead and let them know that there is an emergency release button if they need to get out, as well as we're there the entire time. Um, we send visual clues and we're there if they need something. We're not just gonna leave them in the room if they need to get out. So I think the largest challenge we have here at Escape the Room DC is that some of our puzzle goers take the name seriously. They literally take it as escape the room by all means possible, when that's not our goal here. Um, we do require brains over bronze, so there's no need to climb through the ceiling tiles or rip up the floorboards to get out of the room by all means possible. You are just gonna get out through the door you came back in through. So Escape the Room is different from our competitors because we do have a big secret in all of our rooms. Um, so it is great to watch our participants um, finally reveal that secret. Um, they always get a good laugh and excitement and rush from it. Um, and so it's just fun to watch them find that. We are located at 409 7th Street Northwest um, in historic Penn Quarter District. Um, we are located very close to Navy Memorial Archives Metro, um, which is the green and yellow line, as well as we are two blocks south from Chinatown, which is the red, yellow, and green lines. The Metro is very important. Um, it can be hectic to park down in DC, especially on the weekends, Friday nights, everyone's down here and we're so close to the Verizon Center. There's always events going on. So having the Metro so close to us is great because families can just ride on in, um, participate in the game, and there's so many places to eat around the area um, that they can make it a whole day of activities down here. We try to cater to everyone that we can. Um, so yes, we are family friendly. We also take walk-ins every day. Um, but we also get large groups of people, so we do corporate events, um, birthday parties, bachelorette parties, um, everyone comes down and it's just a great time no matter what type of group you're in. For birthday parties and different um, celebrations that we have, we can add personal touches to it um, so we can hide small things throughout the rooms that the groups can find. Um, we also can insert names into our clues so it's like you actually are a part of the game itself. So Monday through Friday we open at 5 p.m. Um, Saturday and Sunday we open at noon. Monday through Saturday we close at 11.30 and then Sundays we close at 10 p.m. So you can visit us at escapetheroomdc.com or give us a call at 202-888-0802.
UPASS is an exciting fair media or PASS product that we're offering to college and university students in the region. It's an amazing savings and discounts for students. Many students who come to the greater Washington metropolitan area are trying to find a way to explore and learn and take advantage of internships. This is what the UPASS will enable them to do for a very cost-effective way. I ride the metro every day to class and to work and it's extremely expensive so for them to be able to offer a discount that is about a dollar a day I think it saves students a lot of money. Uh, all the universities in the metro DC area should take advantage of this opportunity because it saves students a lot of money. So coming to the DC area I was a transfer in spring semester student so coming in I didn't know anything about the DC metro system or how to navigate or get around so it was really good to one hear about the transportation services and transportations route here in the DC area but also two know that I can use it unlimited amount of times as a new resident of the DC area. This U-Pass represents an opportunity to build a new market and to engage the future riders in the system. Metro sees this as a value proposition. Essentially, we are building the next generation of riders, and we're also sticking to our core mission of making sure that communities and that public transit is accessible. Well, college students certainly are a community that we need to reach out to. Metro is already in dialogues with many of the colleges and universities across the campus. We would go and meet with them, talk about how we could start the implementation phase, and we'd move from there. I'm here from American University's uh, Office of Risk, Safety, and Transportation Programs. So 90% of our student body is using the UPASS on a regular basis. So we have a significant number that are using it every day to get to internships, part-time jobs, cultural activities in DC, and to just get to class. Working with Metro made it really easy. There was a lot of moving parts, there was a lot of pieces to put together, but we had a great group with Metro, with internal stakeholders, with students at AU to put it together and make sure it was incredibly successful when the program was implemented in August. We're looking forward to yet another year of our pilot program. Our board recently um, approved the extension of the program for one year. We're hoping to expand and engage new students and new colleges and universities throughout the region. Phase one, we were able to engage American University as our first pilot school, and we have successfully introduced the product to 11,000 students there. We've seen a significant ridership increase by about 10% in the Tinley Town quarter. We've also seen a 90% market penetration rate, which we're very excited about. In addition to that, we've seen some growth in our off-peak ridership period, which is a period when we already have excess capacity uh, for customers. So we're very excited about some of the gains that we've seen and we're hoping through this next phase that we will engage a larger universe of students and we'll be able to see additional incremental ridership gains. Metro has received a number of inquiries from, from students all across the region about how do we get UPASS in our campuses. And what we say is the first step is to educate yourself. Visit the Metro UPASS website to find out how, how does the UPASS work? Would it really be a good opportunity for my campus? And then we say share that information with your friends. Share it. See if other students will be interested in it. And finally, take the survey. Activate. Advocate for it. Take the survey. Share this information with your administrators and say, we think that we want UPASS on our campus. I just say, I hope that we see an expansion of the UPASS program. You know, many people, and I know there are folks out there who have college students, and this represents a huge cost savings for them. Hello, I'm David Fritsche and welcome to Stable DC. We are a Swiss-inspired restaurant in the heart of Washington DC. Myself and my business partner, we born, both born and raised in Switzerland, so we decided to open up a Swiss-inspired restaurant. I've been living in the US for 10 years and Switzerland is still going to be my main home, but since I've been in the US for 10 years, it kind of became my home too, so we're going to combine both of our homes into one restaurant concept. From us growing up in Switzerland, uh, playing on farmland, in stables, in barns and all that. So again, a little bit from our um, home to DC. The other way, when you look at stable and the way the logo is made with the red S, it almost looks like Swiss table when you take it apart. Swiss cuisine is, we call it the crossroads between our neighboring countries. Switzerland is surrounded by Austria, France, Italy and Germany. So in depending which area you go in Switzerland, 
The influence comes from all over the border. It's a very nice, unique dining experience. We did most of the renovation ourselves. So the decor, the way it looks, we did that all the way we wanted it to be. It definitely has that barn feel to it. It should be like a country farmhouse kind of atmosphere. The wooden counters we have around, along the kitchen, they've refurbished wood from an old log cabin from a deep creek in Maryland, which was 120 years old. And the sheet metals up there, they're from an old barn in Maryland. So we try to use as many um, local pieces as well in, in the decoration and the concept of the restaurant. Location is great. I um, mean, in the beginning, we weren't sure which neighborhood we want to pick, so we looked around the entire city. We had certain ideas in mind how the layout's supposed to be. We know we wanted to have an open kitchen. And so we came across this restaurant and we looked at the neighborhood. I always was a big fan of H Street since it's up and coming and people are very open-minded. We were looking more at different neighborhoods in the city and some of them they're not that easily accessible by metro or public transport. But then we found this location and with the streetcars coming along H Street it was great for us because in Switzerland pretty much every bigger city has streetcars, right? So here when you look out the window and you see the streetcars coming by, it almost reminds you a little bit of um, sitting in a cafe or in a restaurant somewhere in Zurich or another big city in, in Switzerland. So it's definitely good and also for our employees it definitely helps when they have um, public transportation to come and to get and leave work with that as well. So it definitely was a big part for us too. So we open, we open for dinner uh, Tuesday through Saturday night. So we closed Sunday, Monday night. And we open at 5.30 and um, we pretty much cater to, to everybody. Like what we have seen over the three weeks we are open, we get a lot of people from the neighborhood which, which come, which is great, which is what we want. And then a lot of people treat us a little bit like a destination who either are from Switzerland, have been to Switzerland, want to try out Swiss food. So it's actually a nice combination of um, neighborhood customers and people which come to see us because of the concept we have. We'll be here every single day. David is cooking behind the line and I'll be in front of the house managing the restaurant, making sure all the guests are looked after well. So people can contact us on Facebook, make reservations, we take over Yelp, but obviously they also can call us on our phone, which we hear pretty much every day from 10 onwards till late at night. We do have a website, it's stabledc.com. you find all the information there. It's all linked to Yelp where you can make your reservation and all that good stuff. We know what you want, what you really, really want. That's why we'll have Wi-Fi installed in over half of our underground stations by the end of 2017. That ought to spice up the ride. So uh, today's event is bring your child to work today for WMATA employees and uh, they have the opportunity to actually bring their child into WMATA so that the kids can see all the fascinating things and all the, the variety of jobs that we have here at WMATA. Anything they can imagine from uh, engineering, bus operators, train operators, station managers, so they get to see technical, they get to see science, they get to see service, they get to see it all. We are in the um, mock-up tunnel or our training tunnel here at Commentary Facility. Uh, we're, what we do here is we bring fire rescue personnel into our tunnel. It's a one-to-one -one scale of an actual tunnel on the roadway here at Metro. Uh, so what we did was bring the kids in and we, did, we treat them kind of like we had to do the firefighters and police officers. We, had, we put smoke in the tunnel, we have our uh, simulated flames going. So they get an idea of what the fire department goes through when they come out here and train for uh, roadway evacuations in case of a fire or a smoking conditions within one of our tunnels. For us here in Metro Maintenance, we supply all the uh, components uh, for the garages. Uh, we do most of our midlife overhaul. Uh, we supply everything for that, the components, the engines, the transmissions. Uh, what we try to do is make sure the bus doesn't break down for our customers. We hope they uh, we get one or two that would like to go into maintenance. Maintenance is a big field we have problems with right now filling it. Uh, obviously with uh, computers and software and all that, that's where everybody's going and it's hard to bring them back. But the buses themselves have a lot of technical on them too. Uh, ECMs and, and electronics are, are, are a big, big part of it. I brought my daughter Caroline. 
She's eight years old. She's in second grade. Whenever I come home and talk about work and talk about the trains and buses, you know, she always wants to know more. So I, you know, thought that she would really have a great time doing this. I think it's really great to show them um, all the different kinds of jobs that we have here at Metro and, and how many different kinds of people it takes, you know, just to run the system. You know, we all experience that confusion where you don't really know what you're going to do. What's in store for me? Uh, and, and I think a lot of that may be a lack of exposure to different careers and different professions. On a daily basis, our daily routine is we check on at work and we'll have a bank of stations that we're uh, that we need to check every day and we'll just do random sweeps throughout those stations all day long. Bain is a two-year-old Belgian Malinois. Uh, our training was about, about six weeks to uh, get him fully trained. These dogs keep everybody safe. You know, from me, the handler, it keeps me from having to, you know, open bags that may be suspect. You know, dogs' noses are so sensitive that, you know, they can smell, you know, an odor that they're trained to detect. I mean, from a far distance. Our dogs are popular, that's part of the training. We want them to be extremely social, be able to be around anybody in any situation. And I'm ready to do more. And you like the dogs? Yep. Carolyn, can you come Why back do you like the dogs? Because dogs are my favorite animal. And the good, other good thing is that I, I can miss school. <laughs> I am not. We wanted the young people today to, to uh, walk away with what it actually takes to uh, put the bus out on the street uh, for our customers and to um, what it takes to keep it running. The most important thing I want the kids to walk away with is just how to be safe around the metro system overall, around the roadway and our rail cars. That's what's most important to me that they take away from this. I want the kids to take away the fact that they can feel safe while riding metro, knowing that dogs like Bane, knowing that we have 18 other canines just like Bane that are out here keeping everybody safe. Everybody. Let's say three of those kids see a career here at WMATA that sparks them, that they say, you know what, I want to do that. Then, then the whole program is beyond what we would expect it. Because so now you have three kids that now have a, a career goal in mind. And if they come here to WMATA, it's a win-win. So I think it's a very important thing. WMATA agreed they've been recycling um, for scrap many of the older cars as they replace and upgrade the metro system. So we were able to get one of the cars which we're going to use for a retail pop-up at the Grosvenor metro station. Ultimately we're creating a large residential community and mixed-use community at Grosvenor Strathmore Metro. It's going to be called Strathmore Square. All of it to be as green as possible, LEED certified, and this beautiful idea of being able to recycle these cars rather than this being turned into scrap, we thought they're a wonderful way right outside the metro to show there's another way to reuse this. Well, I was struggling with what should the kiosks look like. So often you have these kind of prefab little boxes that a retailer may, may operate out of or you have farmer's market style tents and things. And he noticed that there was a recycling program going on at Metro. And so we called and they were very receptive and said, you can have a car. This is the first piece and we'll be able to have a retailer work out of here, potentially have different food vendors. We have an incredible um, metal sculptor who came down from Long Island who's actually working on it. I've been sculpting, uh, I don't know, since uh, 2005. I uh, started off with the simple rebar pieces and then I evolved into uh, kinetics really get into kinetic sculpture. People are actually going to see with this art, they're going to see history. You'll get the feel of, you know, how many people came in here on a daily basis and sat down in, in those chairs right there. And there's a historic, you know, thing about it. This whole structure is made of aluminum and it's made to withstand the test of time. And I think the opportunity to, uh, to pull one from a scrapyard, you know, I'm going to a scrapyard and, and, and let the people interact with it. I, I think they're going to love it. Everybody's going to love it. How could you not? So Five Squares Development, we're focused exclusively on urban and transit-oriented development opportunities. 
This company is solely focused on where we can make an impact in the community. WMATA unanimously approved this idea of pop-ups as a pilot program to see could they do this in other stations. This idea of incubator retail where you may have startup retailers who are looking to meet some of the thousands of people that are using the metro every day and it's a way to introduce their product in a venue you've never seen which is an old subway car. No challenge is too big. I, I, take, I take, them, take them on. I don't know, I, get a, I, I thrive on it. I guess I've always been known as the guy uh, to get it done. So that's why I'm here, to get this job done and, you know, give it the artistic flair that it needs uh, to make it cool, give it a cool factor. I'm going to continue doing this type of artwork and uh, it's my passion in life. Um, anybody's welcome to, to look at my artwork at robertmojo.com. That's where we, uh, we post our stuff, so I love commissioning, I'm, I'm down for anything. Individual board members said when we can make a difference in our communities beyond just providing the transportation, we're all for it. And I think it surprised everybody. And now being able to escalate that effort and say we want to do something really different, it's artistic, so we're going to connect it into Strathmore, partner with WMATA and show when you're willing to be creative and, and take some chances, you can sometimes do some real good in a community. Why are we adding a new 7000 series car roughly every business day? Because when it comes to improving your service, we mean business. This summer, MetroRail's new hours of service are going to take effect, but for people who travel late at night on weekends or early in the mornings on Sunday, or at other times affected by the MetroRail hours changes, MetroBus is offering later and earlier service to help people get around. Uh, some of the bigger changes as part of that effort include extending bus service from Virginia to the District of Columbia across the 14th Street Bridge. That'll be Route 16E, which will connect Franklin Square downtown with the Pentagon and Columbia Pike Corridor. And in Virginia, from the Pentagon, uh, customers can transfer to other services that are already operating to continue their trips. Um, in Maryland, we're extending service up the Rockville Pike Corridor. And in D.C., what we're doing is adding a lot of late night and early trips, making some of our busiest routes near 24-hour services. When we put together the rail span bus service plan, we looked at segments of the metro rail system that had the highest ridership at the times that were affected by the proposals. And what we found and what we did is we added trips to routes or extended routes to provide those connections to match the highest corridor rail ridership lines. That includes the orange line between Ballston and downtown, the yellow line between um, Pentagon and downtown, and service to the east along um, the blue, orange, and silver lines, and then on the red line. So from the Ballston Station, Route 38B parallels the orange and silver lines on the western end of downtown and serves into the Farragut Square area. So riders coming from downtown and needing to travel along that portion of the rail system could instead use Metrobus Route 38B. The 16E extension mimics the connection between the Pentagon and downtown DC additional trips on a host of key routes, including the 30s and the X2, provides connections to the south and eastern parts of the district, and then the L2 up Connecticut Avenue and Wisconsin Avenue, mimicking the red line, and then additional trips on the 64, the 70, the 80, and so on and so forth for the eastern end of the red line connections. Customers can transfer to other regional bus service and other metro bus service to get around Really, a lot of places, including a lot of late night activity centers, Ballston, Bethesda, Silver Spring, Wheaton, College Park. Um, some of the larger changes in Maryland include transitioning service to instead provide transfers at the Southern Avenue Metro Station, and that includes the Oxon Hill services, the P-17 and P-19, and the Fort Washington Forest services, the W-13 and W-14. So those services will now feed into the Green Line at Southern Avenue Station. In addition, we're adding some additional trips in Virginia on Route 18P 
between Burke Center and the Pentagon. So we do service changes four times a year, and generally in um, June and December are our bigger service changes. Our customers tell us um, what they feel is missing. We monitor ridership continuously. We monitor on-time performance continuously and um, coordination with our local jurisdiction and funding partners. And working with all those inputs, we put together service plans. On the 16th Street corridor in the District of Columbia, we worked in partnership with the DDOT, and what we found is that um, we're going, we needed to add trips to have, help people travel along the corridor faster. We're adding trips on Metro Extra Route S9, which operates limited stop service between the Silver Spring Metro Rail Station and downtown DC by way of 16th Street. Service will change on the local S2 and S4 routes, but service will be added on the S9 limited stop, including new Saturday service. So the easiest thing people can do is go online to Metro's online trip planner at wamata.com, and there's an option in there where you can select bus only, or if you're traveling at a time that's affected by the rail span change, the trip planner will already recognize that rail is not operating. But the trip planner will provide you with step-by-step -step instructions on how to ride Metro bus as part of your journey. Did you know that Opportunity rides with Metro? Join us for the Metro Back to Business Fair scheduled for June 20th, 2017 from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Washington Convention Center. Come and join the first ever Metro Procurement Fair and learn how you can grow your business by doing business with Metro. Because back to good means getting back to business. The Penguins are back to brighten the days of Silver Spring Transit users. Metro is delighted to accept the loan of this wonderful artwork from Montgomery County for display outside the station. It will continue to be owned by the county and will be loaned to WMATA for a renewable 10-year term. This is a brand new mural, beautifully done, beautifully reproduced. But if you look at it, you'll see there's some things about it that are kind of old and memories of past times. The penguins are all using paper fare cards. And if you look at the Metro map that's on the side there, you'll notice that not only is it missing the silver line, it's even missing the green line, which tells us that Metro has come a long way since this uh, mural went up. The original is uh, going to be conserved and continues to be maintained by uh, in the county. And we're now looking at other places that we might be able to put it inside. For many years, the penguins were recognizable landmarks for commuters coming through Silver Spring and became unofficial mascots for the downtown area. The penguin has become such an iconic part of Silver Spring's brand. These penguins, being so old, have spawned offspring. You know, the Silver Spring penguin in the Thanksgiving parade, the Silver Spring penguins on the, uh, on the ice rink. With all the changes in Silver Spring, I know for many longtime residents, it always felt like we love all the changes, but it always felt like an old friend was missing. So I'm really glad to be here today to see an old friend return to their rightful home in Silver Spring. The Penguins will now become part of Metro's Art and Transit program, which features artwork in about one out of every three Metro stations. The purpose of station artwork is not just to beautify stations, but also to link them to the surrounding communities. This mural is such a wonderful example of that. When we talk about the things that make Montgomery County and our urban nodes vibrant, Art really is such a critically important part of that. We look forward to joining the Penguins on the trains for many years to come. joining us for this episode of Metro Focus. I hope you enjoyed all the featured destinations and some of the behind the scenes information we share about Metro. Join us next time as we take you on another exciting journey with Metro Focus.